I think it's go time for me. It's so good to see you guys this morning. Um, good morning to you all. It was nice and soothing introduction music at Deaf and Rock Calm to, to my very chaotic morning already. So I hope that helped you guys as well. Um, happy Tuesday. On behalf of the Arizona Small Business Association and Salt River Project, welcome to Arizona Speaks, the state of small business. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, although we still cannot we cannot meet in person, we continue to obviously be safe and social distance. We are just so grateful to even gather virtually to have this happen and to make this happen online and to see you guys here. Um, ASBA does have an exciting event planned for you today. Uh, so we can't wait to get started and dig in and talk about the many economic contributions of our small business community. My name is Kathleen Mascarenas. I am a media relations representative with Salt River Project. Um, to kind of give you some background, SRP has a long history of collaborative partnership with the Arizona Small Business Association and the small business community as a whole throughout Arizona. Um, at SRP, we know how important, how vitally important our small businesses are to the overall health and vibrancy of the Arizona economy. Um, we have partnered with ASBA to bring critically important resources to small business owners throughout Arizona. And today's program will highlight just how important our small businesses are in powering our economy and what we can do to continue to support you guys and small businesses in this recovery effort. Um, SRP has provided water and power for more than a century to our region. If you kind of happen to be new and didn't know that, um, we are very much intricately woven into the society here in the Valley. Um, we work very hard to keep the lights on, to, to support the community, to help economic growth. SRP is very grateful for the opportunity at this crucial time to bring such relevant content to business owners seeking to recover, reposition themselves, and thrive in the wake of this pandemic. Today, SRP and ASBA are committed to helping businesses in Arizona recover and return stronger than before. So without further ado, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you today's moderator, um, Jen Daniels. Jen has been a longtime champion and advocate of the small business community, dating back to her time as a council member and most recently, mayor of Gilbert. Now, under Jen's leadership, uh, Gilbert's business has thrived, and she continues to be a passion. And she continues to be passionate about growing the state's economy. Now, Jen currently serves on the state transportation board, and owns and operates her own small business as well. So, please welcome Jen Daniels. Thank you, Kathleen, and thank you so much. Support of um, small businesses and ASBA. We are so grateful for our sponsors today. We have Cox Business, Southwest Airlines, and Aurora. And without their support, we could not make today possible. So thank you to each of you for your support. Um, we are really excited about today's state of small business, how important it is that we gather together um, in preparation for 2021 and some of the great things that we really do have to look forward to. Uh, 2020 has no doubt been a trying and testing year for all of us. Um, and I just... Uh, as we look forward, we really want you to be able to take away from today some tangible thoughts about how you can shift and uh, really uh, recreate your business as needed to fit today's economy. And so um, I'm really excited that ASBA partnered with Jim Brown's consulting group to develop this comprehensive economic report. And there is so much information in there. I encourage all of you when you get a copy of that to be able to look through it and really spend some time digging in. Um, we are gonna be doing some high level uh, discussion on this full report today. And it will come as no surprise to each of you that our small businesses in Arizona are the lifeblood of our economy. Um, so you can be really proud of the work that each of you are doing to contribute. Uh, before we get into that conversation, I do wanna introduce uh, Jim Rounds. I call him a friend. I hope he actually uh, calls me a friend um, after this interaction today, Jim. I, I love working with Jim. Um, as a mayor, he was a go-to resource for me and for many, many others. Uh, his work is renowned across the state and the country, and he's widely regarded as one of the top, top economic policy uh, advisors in the state of Arizona. So we're really excited for this extensive work that you've been able to do, Jim, and grateful for the expertise you provided to ASBA as we partnered to really understand 
where small business fits in our Arizona economy. So Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Jim's going to give us some uh, great high level overview of the report. And then we'll get into a, an in-depth conversation and encourage our small businesses to be uh, thinking here and well, thank you. Those are kind words and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, just want to kick it off by uh, going through some basic numbers. Uh, as Jen mentioned, there were so many different economic variables to analyze. And I've been studying the economy in Arizona for two, two and a half decades at this point. And I didn't really appreciate the extent that small businesses uh, the extent that they had an impact on the economy. And so we got into these numbers and it was very impressive. And as a policy advisor, I think that uh, we're gonna have to work even harder going forward if we wanna continue to have a strong Arizona economy uh, to focus on small businesses as, as well as the normal recruitment of the larger businesses. Uh, but if you wanna go ahead and advance that uh, slideshow, I'll uh, start to cover some of these. Uh, so some just some quick facts. Um, we're looking at 1.1 million small business workers, but there's nearly 500,000 uh, self-employed workers. That brings the total to about 1.6 million. And for some context, uh, the state's total employment number is just under 3 million. So we're talking about the majority of employees in the state uh, work for small businesses or are self-employed. And when you take a look at the startups, we're talking about 11,000 startups in the last year that was reported. Uh, there's always a year or two lag in some of the data. Um, you have to enhance, you have to add to that by doing some local surveys on occasion, which we may be doing in 2021 with ASPA. Uh, but 45,600 uh, new startup jobs. Uh, next slide. Here's where we get to the nitty gritty. Um, this is a stuff that I think allows for policymakers to have a better grasp on how important. Um, a particular issue is to the state. And so by doing an economic impact model of all of the business activity in the different industries across the state, we ended up with 190 billion in economic output. And just for some comparison, the total state GDP is about 370 billion. So we're talking about more than half of the uh, economic output in the state is from small businesses. 1.6 million workers, as I mentioned, but $70 billion in annual wages and income, and $10 billion in annual state and local tax revenues. So this is a big deal. The health of small businesses directly impacts the health of the economy, and that directly impacts the health of government tax collections so that they can put in the needed resources that allow businesses to thrive. Next slide. Um, I, I really like this one because this one has not been discussed enough. And in, in talking with um, uh, Jess at ASBA and others, there was a real need that was identified to go through and, and try to support the argument that when you bring in a larger business, you're also um, helping the small business uh, community develop, but the small business community helps itself and the small business community helps the large businesses. So all these things are kind of intertwined. And what we did is we created a model that was a little bit more unique than we normally do, which more clearly broke out all of the indirect and the induced impacts of the primary economic activity. So uh, you know, most of you have heard of studies where it talks about multipliers. You bring in a business that has 100 workers in manufacturing, and it'll say, OK, well, we create another 147 jobs. Uh, well, if you take a look at the breakdown, which is one of the columns on this slide, the 147 manufacturing spinoff jobs are in every other major industry where data is collected. If you have 100 jobs in retail, you create an extra 46 jobs because the multiplier is a little smaller because the wages are a little less, but it, it impacts every industry. And in professional and business services, another 91 jobs are created for each 100 in the base sector industry. And that's across every industry. So the, the main point to make from this is every industry is affected. Uh, when you bring in a large business, it impacts the small businesses, but the small businesses are the suppliers to the large businesses and it helps them become profitable too. So there's a synergy that I think we have to discuss a little bit more going forward. And then the last slide. Um, one of the, the bigger issues when you deal with a statewide organization like ASBA is uh, it, it, it represents Arizona as a whole. 
and we took a look at the small business characteristics by county. And the, the numbers were a little bit more dramatic than I thought they would be. Uh, but the, the real good information is in the fourth column towards the bottom, where in rural Arizona, about two thirds of um, total employment is with small businesses and in the urban areas about half. So there's disproportionate small business employment in rural areas. And a lot of the rural areas have different um, economic needs. You might see some areas that might be limited by land constraints. Uh, you might see others that are limited because of uh, a lack of funding to put in infrastructure that is needed. Uh, but overall, if we can identify and, and work with uh, groups like ASPA and their connections with other organizations as well, I think that we'll be able to identify good public policy going forward to not only deal with the uh, COVID recession, which will be out of soon, but also over the next decade, how can we make this one of the best expansions in our state's history? And so this is just a small piece of the data that was developed, but these are the ones that stood out to me the most. And um, I'm hoping that this will be useful and will generate some discussion. Thanks so much, Jim. That was a great overview and I appreciate it so much. I um, I just can't say enough about the work that, that you and your team have done to benefit our small businesses. Part of our effort at ASBA is really to understand the ecosystem that we're all working in so that we can make the adjustments necessary in order to be successful. Um, our businesses have proven, absolutely proven over the last eight, nine months now, how agile and adaptable they can be to whatever changing circumstances ultimately get thrown at them. Um, how can they prepare themselves for the agility that they may need in 2021? I feel like there's still a lot of unknown factors out there, especially, you know, a, a, a third or fourth, I can't remember what number we're on, uh, federal stimulus package and others. So what can our, our businesses do to be more agile? Sure. And I think everything starts with uh, blending good public policy with what's happening in the economy. So like you mentioned, there's some unknowns or some knowns. The, the knowns include the uh, uh, distribution of the vaccine, which is uh, already starting to take place. Um, I've been saying that the recession ends the month that we have uh, wide dispersal of the, the vaccine among the general public. So we're looking at that ending uh, beginning of this, this next calendar year, but it's going to take a little while to recover. The problem is these small businesses have been really stretched financially and some are just hanging on. And so I think we still need another package that'll help the small businesses going forward uh, to get through the rest of the COVID recession and then strengthen that foundation to go forward. So we have one of these you know, fantastic expansions that we're used to in Arizona. And so this reminds me very much like what we dealt with after the great recession, where we were faced with um, some public policy issues that we talked about, a lot of it focused on tax policy uh, less on economic development policy on some of the other foundational items. Then we learn from our mistakes and we realize there's a lot of things that make the economy tick. Now we need to fine tune the economy again through good public policy. And I'm hoping that we can identify some good policies with ASBA related to, again, getting through the rest of the day, this downturn. Do we want to maybe add uh, uh, permanently to statute some of the executive orders that have been uh, uh, brought forth by uh, the governor? Um, what are we going to do mid and longer term related to some of these businesses that maybe are having some financial problems, uh, have good access to loans so they can get back on their feet. So there's a lot of different items that I think we need to start talking about, but we need to break it down by uh, current recession and then post COVID. And then we have to break it down by type of industry. And then we need to break it down by what part of the state are these businesses in. And unfortunately, the economy is complicated. Public policy is complicated. But if you have a lot of good people working towards the same cause, you have a lot of partners on these things, we can do it. Yeah, that's such a great no note. Um, and I just want to, to let the audience know how much ASBA has been working side by side and to develop relationships with our legislators and other policymakers from the local county and state level and how important those relationships will be as we have a seat at the table to help develop that solid public policy that's going to make a difference long term for our businesses. So um, I know ASBA is working diligently on that effort and I'm impressed with the work that they've done uh, even thus far uh, at the end of 2020. Um, we have a big business ecosystem in Arizona as well. A lot of times they get the headlines when they relocate here. But I think small business, as noted within the report, 
is critical to the success of these larger businesses that are that are maybe capturing the headlines. So tell us a little bit more, Jim, about the ecosystem for big business and why small business is the most critical component in that ecosystem. So there's a number of things that make the economy tick. Um, you the tax policy does matter. So does economic development policy, infrastructure quality, workforce in particular. Uh, the list goes on and on. You can list a couple of dozen things that make the economy tick. And a lot of these things are looked at by those businesses that want to maybe locate here that have a choice of locating elsewhere. But again, they're suppliers. And we saw on that one table how it impacts just about every industry when you bring these uh, companies in. They have to have a good supplier network. Um, one thing that isn't discussed enough that I really wish it was is um, we need to embrace this concept of growing from within as well. And so it's great that we can recruit talent and we can recruit businesses, but we can really make the economy thrive if we grow from within. Um, this is why I'm a strong supporter of um, a lot of the workforce programs at the community colleges, a new economy initiative uh, that ABOR is putting forward. And what ASPA is trying to do here, which kind of blends everything together. And I'm already seeing connectivity between groups like ASPA and opportunities with uh, the League of Cities and Towns. Uh, with um, other uh, organizations across the state. And it, for me, when, when I can see that, that old concept of Venn diagrams where you have these circles that overlap, they look kind of like Olympic rings. Uh, when you have efforts that overlap and you see people working on the same thing, but when you communicate, you can kind of spread the, there, there's a little division of labor and you can work towards the same goals. I'm seeing all these economic efforts and the needs of what we need to implement going forward with these circles that are overlapping quite a bit. And so there's so many opportunities to connect um, these different organizations. And I feel like um, that's really the future for the state is that, that next step in our evolution is this additional communication. And every time I've talked with uh, the, the crew at ASPA, uh, they have been all over uh, this idea of um, looking statewide, participating in the different discussions, sometimes maybe being a leader, sometimes being a follower, uh, sometimes being that uh, quote-unquote wingman on, on a particular project maybe. Uh, it, it's, it, it comes with innovative leadership, and I'm more excited about this uh, with uh, ASBA than I have been in any previous year that I've been studying economics. That's really helpful. Thanks, Jim. And thanks for continuing to support ASBA as they work to um, ensure that small businesses have all the tools that they need to be successful here in the state. Um, we have a lot of dialogue and I think our small businesses in particular don't quite realize yet how impactful their voice is with the policymakers, with the individuals who are creating these regulations and likely have unintended consequences associated with it. Um, how can we, or what should we be telling our small businesses to say and to do to increase uh, their influence and also to collectively work together in order to be able to represent their industry, um, even their region at the state and local level? Well, you need to participate in, in groups like ASPA because you need a, a central voice. And, um, you know, there, there, there's this argument that um, when, you, when you have a lot of voices, but uh, everybody is not on the same page in terms of timing when it comes to public policy or, or the exact messaging, uh, that, that matters. And, and it's not just the support of ASPA, so the small business community coming together the small business community also have, has different organizations. You have uh, restaurant and bars uh, having an organization. You have others. Uh, uh, with, you have other industries uh, with different organizations. And so the, the key is to get uh, the leadership in these groups together and to get information from the members. I, I would love to have an opportunity to ask all these different small business organizations to put out some uh, surveys of their members and collect additional information uh, because. It's one thing to look at economics. It's one thing to look at public policy um, and, and in theory, or you look at the broader data, what's happening across the state. It's another thing to get direct feedback from individuals. So um, I, I have a small business as well. I maybe open up my mouth a little bit too much when it comes to public policy, but I'm encouraging everybody uh, to have some voice. And when you can't have a strong voice yourself, depending on your industry, have uh, support somebody that can have that strong voice for you. That's insightful. Um, 
I think any crisis, whether it's personal or in our business or, you know, generally speaking in an economy, it highlights where our weaknesses might be and where we may have deficiencies, uh, which provides us an opportunity. It really does. Um, so as we see the sh shift occurring, as we did with the Great Recession, where are you seeing impactful businesses and jobs and their potential for growth, especially if we wanna grow from within. Where are you seeing those, what industries, um, and, and really how can our small businesses participating today uh, really understand the role that they can play as Arizona's economy recovers? Um, it, in some cases and in some industries with small businesses, uh, having a strong foundation in a community, economic foundation, supports the businesses. So if you have good high wage jobs at small businesses as well, uh, that supports uh, strength in the retail uh, area and, and, and other sectors as well. What I'm excited about the most is the opportunity for more higher value added tech related um, because these are the entrepreneurs that come to places like Arizona, maybe in California, or wanting to come here because of the other economic benefits that we provide and encouraging them and providing them with the tools to be successful. We don't necessarily uh, have to have handouts, so to speak, uh, with, with many of these uh, businesses. Uh, maybe during this COVID crisis, it's very unusual, so the government has to step up and provide some programs, but the key, and I've heard this from uh, um, uh, Jess at ASPA, is how can we give the tools to people so that they can help themselves as well? And having the right workforce, having the high tech workforce, uh, in it, like for example, in the, the greater Phoenix area, I love what ASU is doing with the engineering department and where they're going with the new economy initiative component. And that's gonna result in additional small business development. The entrepreneurs are gonna be supported and these businesses turn into the large businesses down the road. And just to, to emphasize why this is so important, for a different assignment, we did some math on what does it take to get our per capita personal income up to the US average? And this is adjusting for uh, age, workforce age, cost of living, things like that. We have to create hundreds of thousands of jobs uh, at, at more than $100,000 a year in order to just to catch up with the US. So we need to not only focus on economic development, but we need to focus on the big business recruitment, but also the small business growing from within, or we're not gonna be able to get to that goal. And it's gonna take between 10 and 20 years to get there. And it's gonna be aggressive support. But when you calculate the return on investment, the economic benefits of just getting to the US average on some of these variables, it's hundreds of billions of dollars in economic activity and tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars, maybe hundreds of million dollars in additional tax collections that can then be reinvested in the community. It could even be used to uh, relieve uh, the, the taxpayer burden a little bit if we have a, a needed tax cut in an area that's identified. It can be invested in roads. It can be invested in a lot of areas. And so the healthy economy does really beget um, healthy tax revenues and then vice versa. So it, it's this upward spiral that we need to get back on again that COVID took us off temporarily, but I do believe this is temporary. I do too. And again, I'm seeing just tremendous effort from our small businesses, as I'm sure you ha you are as well, Jim. And I know you've got probably stories you can share with us from, you know, your experience writing this, also being a small business owner yourself and just being part of the Arizona economic economy. You hear stories, I would imagine, on a daily basis of both the unintended and intentional consequences of policy, how that relates to our small businesses. Can you share with us, you know, one or two of those stories? I think that will help paint a picture and, and probably plant some seeds for our viewers today. Sure, and, and so many come to mind, but um, to make it personal, I remember when I started mine uh, about five years ago, and uh, I thought it was gonna be really easy to get a strong line of credit with a bank that I've been with for a very long time. Uh, it, done all my banking with uh, personally and then with the business. And it was a struggle because I was considered a check mark on a matrix. And I didn't understand why it was so difficult uh, because I felt like I was a good bet. And I remember in presentations taking that opportunity to call out that particular bank on their uh, lack of uh, vision on trying to help businesses get established. Uh, and so I enjoyed that for a couple of years and then I decided to be nice again. But uh, it made me worry about um, that, that plumber that would really like to start his own business. And unfortunately, 
it's very expensive to get the equipment, the vehicles and things like that. And they're a great bet, but how can we encourage them, uh, that people in that industry and others uh, to accomplish what they can accomplish if they're given the right tools? And again, it, it's not creating handouts, it's creating that opportunity to move up the ladder themselves. Um, another one is um, a friend that owned a couple of restaurants that closed. They closed before COVID, but um, we talked about it and I did a, a lengthy interview uh, with him on the restaurant industry and just finding out uh, the details within restaurants and bars, uh, the extent that um, say liquor sales uh, are uh, in many cases uh, is the thing that provides the profit margin or the extent that something as simple as uh, the price of avocados and limes going up, impacting what they do. When you have very small margins, uh, minor increases in some of the major inputs, uh, all of a sudden convert a profitable business into losing money. And it made me realize that very small things matter. And we've always said that small changes in the economy have big impacts. Very minuscule increases on our rate of growth and our wages creates billions of dollars in additional tax collections. Well, with small businesses, very minor changes in costs or opportunities uh, that could be identified to help them succeed will have dramatic impacts. So you think about economics, small changes have big impacts. And so we should be impressed when we come up with ideas that could move the needle just a little bit because we can come up with 10 different ideas or 20 ideas over multiple years and really change the way the state operates. Yeah, that really reminds me of the story of the pilot who's one degree off when he starts his flight and ends up thousands of miles away from his intended destination. And our goal is to make sure that not only are we pointed in the right direction, but that we have all the tools and all the individuals, the relationships necessary on the plane with us to get where we need to go. And um, I think we're, we're, we're making some solid strides in that, in that area in Arizona. And I still believe that Arizona is one of those places where you can come uh, without having this pedigree, without having, you know, a, an incredible, you know, bank account, you can come here and you really can realize the American dream right here in Arizona. Have you heard any of those types of stories, Jim, where you see people just realizing uh, how, how many opportunities they have here in the state? Um, all the time. Uh, there's a, a new friend of mine um, is looking to locate a small business. It'll be a couple of hundred workers. Uh, small business is generally considered less than 500, but most people think about it as one to 200 or less and is interested in Arizona compared to a lot of other places because of the great opportunities and the messaging has been good. We've had good marketing. We've had a governor that's been very supportive of uh, business development, um, uh, fantastic at marketing the state. We've had Commerce Authority um, efforts related to that. Even the Office of Tourism has a role in economic development and the individual cities and towns like uh, with what you did uh, in, in Gilbert over the years. Uh, all that stuff uh, really matters. And so uh, what, I, what I think that we're gonna continue to see is support for uh, this enthusiasm about Arizona, but we'll have some stuff that we have to overcome um, well, whenever we have a tax increase, we'll have to make sure that maybe we have some economic development planning that'll offset that, the negative impacts, if there are going to be any. We have to make sure that we support workforce training. But I, I think the bigger key with government, and government often doesn't think in these terms, but I think they're starting to, is I hear all the time from lawmakers that uh, government needs to be operated like a business. Uh, well, you can't, but you can bring in business principles. And what I would like to see is looking at individual programs. Now we're gonna be looking at small business programs, hopefully other programs related to infrastructure and things like that to help the state move forward. Uh, but we have to start calculating return on investment. We have to start calculating what is the benefit if we spend $100 million in a particular area, how long will it take to get that return? And, and you know this very well, this is exactly how we do economic development recruitment. You never give away more than you're getting in return. Essentially, we're doing an impact analysis of public policy. This is where we need to go. We need to bring math into politics. And that's gonna be very scary for some policymakers, but I think they will embrace it when they start to see how everybody benefits when you combine economic principles, sometimes doing some complicated math, but telling a story and explaining it and having a lot of advocates. It, 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 it's really a call to action for everybody. 
Transparency in that matters. And um, I think that's one of the key components that I specifically think government can do better. And that's why I also think reports like the one that you have developed for, for ASVA um, will have such an impact in public policy and in that arena. Uh, there was most recently a ballot initiative, uh, Proposition 208. ASVA took a no on 208 stance. And now we're seeing reports of businesses who are leaving the state of Arizona due to the tax increase. This question came from one of our um, one of our uh, attendees today and so I just want to to see if you can address this um, can you explain more about the tax increase that was passed and why that's impacting small business uh, and why ASBA took a no on 208 stance and also uh, in, in for all of our attendees feel free to, to add your questions into the chat box as well and we'll see if we how many we can get to today so Jim Sure. Uh, and uh, j just to start off with, I, I'm an advocate of having uh, quality education investment, uh, workforce training. It's one of the, the, the number one issues that come up when businesses locate or people want to start up a business, a smaller business. Uh, it, it's always top of mind. In this particular initiative, we're the ones that did the calculation of the uh, potential economic losses uh, from the initiative. And uh, it was our opinion based on calculations, based on uh, being very conservative with our estimates that over about 10 years, we we're going to lose 124,000 jobs and about 2.4 billion in state and local tax collections. And this had to do with not dramatic changes in economic growth. It, it was reducing our rate of growth from 1.7% to 1.6%. It was reducing our business recruitment efforts by only 15%, where the business community said that they were looking at 25 to 50% in some cases, depending on how things go. And so we made very minor changes and it was a pretty significant impact. And this is, this is a tax on high income earners, but not just high income earners, it's an extra three and a half percent income tax on, uh, uh, on if you're making more than 250,000 single or 500,000 uh, married, but there's also not an inflation index. And so within a few years, somebody making the equivalent of 200,000 will now be eligible for this for income above that 200,000. But Again, a lot of things make the economy tick, and we were very strong opponents of this initiative, but not because of the desire for additional education spending. It was, we just felt like there were better ways of doing it. So we're gonna have to be very thoughtful. This is gonna be something that we have to address going forward. Um, the advocates are arguing that there'll be positive economic benefits. Uh, we're concerned that the negative economic uh, uh, impact will be greater than any positive impacts from the additional spending. But I think we have to work together uh, with these individuals. We need both sides of the aisle getting together and say, okay, let's stop basing our decisions on political dogma. Let's start basing it on facts and how the works and how public policy can be implemented and what we can do longer term. So a negative impact, but I do feel like we can overcome it, but we're gonna need some really good, strong public policy. I'm hoping we have a package, a recovery package each of the next three years. I'd like to see 1.0 in 2021, then 2.0, then 3.0. And some of these are going to have to be small business uh, related uh, uh, provisions uh, that will be developed probably in the spring. Uh, but we're going to have to get into some bigger picture items too longer term. But we can overcome it. We'll still be a top state for business locations and for economic growth. Uh, but it depends on how hard we work and if we can work as a team. You know, that's one of the things that I've actually heard over and over again, Jim, and you touched on it. And, and it really is that uh, if there is a better way, how come our legislature didn't address that, you know, in the, the years leading up to this ballot initiative? And I think the the responsibility is absolutely and ultimately lies with our legislators, but it, it requires groups like ASBA and other business organizations and advocates for solid fiscal policy to really come to the table and ensure that we're all working together. So um, again, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's insurmountable, but we certainly made the hill a little steeper uh, in order for us to get there. And so uh, we do have some goals and ASBA will continue to to be the voice of our small businesses at the legislature and we'll ensure that we're sitting at the table to have those in-depth conversations. Uh, shifting gears just a little bit, we have a, a question from one of our viewers today, um, really a question about financing for small businesses that it's gotten even more difficult than it was already uh, post-COVID for our small businesses to obtain financing, especially those in some of the hard, harder hit industries, including the travel, hospitality uh, industries. Um, 
what other financing options might there be for some of these small businesses who are hitting walls, if you will, when it comes to obtaining uh, financing with their banks and other types of institutions? And, and that's, a, that's a great question. And it's a complicated um, uh, answer, really, because you, you can't necessarily just tell banks, you know, lo loan this amount of money to these businesses. Uh, but I think we can work with the banks and identify different ways uh, for them to evaluate, uh, much like my story, uh, me being a, a, a generic uh, place on a matrix uh, didn't make sense. So we have, need to have more thoughtful processes. But one thing that we're looking into is whether or not uh, the state or local entities or IDAs can leverage uh, any of their uh, influence or financial uh, prowess to assist in this area. Uh, but it's very complicated. There are a lot of legal matters. And so we're only very, very early on in that. But I think some other things that can be done is like with uh, tourism. Uh, we did an analysis for the Office of Tourism in the industry and we were very concerned about the extent that they lost jobs during COVID and how long it's going to take to get those back. And we were advocating for a minimum of $10 million of the uh, relief money to be spent on tourism promotion beginning this coming fiscal year, which would be uh, July, uh, um, which is when we're going to be you know, having the, the vaccine uh, distributed. There's going to be more travel. Uh, but one thing I'm worried about is that we're going to lose a lot of travel, the pent-up demand to other states. And if we don't do that, if we don't spend that money, um, we're, we're going to be worse off in terms of fiscal policy, and it's going to hurt the businesses as well. But this gets back to an ROI calculation as well. Uh, in this case, the return on investment was going to be massive, maybe 10 to 1, because it was a very unique situation that had to be analyzed separately. So there could be some programs that allow for extra money to come into businesses because it enhances the business activity, people coming in the door, so to speak. But we do have to try to figure out a way of uh, getting these businesses back on the feet, uh, their feet. The financial uh, items, um, I'm open to suggestions. If anybody uh, wants to uh, send us uh, some of their thoughts, it would be great to collect those. And um, again, the best way to support small businesses or any business, uh, actually anybody that lives in the state, is to keep encouraging a strong economy. The strong economy allows for everything else to function properly. And so we have to still take care of those basic fundamentals even though we might have to tinker with a few policy items here and there for the next couple or three years. Yeah, and our CEO, Jess Roman, has an extensive background in the banking industry. So I think this is a great topic for us to continue uh, in some future dialogue. I think the changing the evaluation tool might be one of the best options that we have, recognizing that there is some risk to our banks. We want to make sure they uh, continue to be solvent. Uh, but in addition to that, we need our businesses to have access to the capital that they need to continue to grow and operate their businesses. So uh, that delicate balance, I'm sure we can work on that and find some good solutions there. Uh, we have another question for one of, from one of our um, viewers today, and that is about the current economic conditions in comparison to those in 2010 during the Great Recession. Uh, Arizona was so heavily dependent on the housing market in 2010, late 2000s, you know, culminating in 2010. Um, how is today's economy in Arizona different? And do we expect to see the same type of drops in housing that we did uh, just a decade ago? So similar uh, reductions in overall employment initially. Uh, back after the Great Recession, we lost about 300,000 jobs. Uh, we lost about the same this time around. Uh, but unlike uh, the Great Recession, we ended up getting a lot of those jobs back uh, recently. So the economy basically shut down and we lost 300,000. It partly reopened and we gained about half of those back. Uh, that's across the U.S. Arizona has actually recovered about two thirds of the lost jobs. But now it's going to be a little slower for the next few months, again, until the vaccine gets out, until people become more confident in uh, their spending. Uh, but we're on a trajectory where we may have fallen as many jobs as we did after the Great Recession, but it took us nearly a decade to get to get back to normal economic activity uh, after the Great Recession. In this case, we're talking about a couple of years. So similar in terms of drop, decline in employment, but vastly different in terms of how we're going to recover. And also keep in mind, we were going to we were probably probably going to have a recession within the next couple of years, just based a very mild recession, just based on how things were. Uh, developing. Uh, the economy was strong, but there were some imbalances. 
Uh, this essentially hits the reset button for us. This gives us an opportunity to not have that recession uh, in, in the near future. And that's why I'm so bullish on the rest of this decade with the right kind of good public policy. I think there will be a correction in the stock market, but I don't think it's going to be devastating. Uh, it's just going to be needed. It's one of those things that has to happen every once in a while. Uh, so the economy at the U.S. level and in Arizona, Arizona's outperforming. We're top three in terms of uh, maintaining jobs. Uh, if you look at the year-to-date data for the last several months. And so, again, top five state in terms of performance. But we need to increase the quality of the jobs that we're bringing in. And we have to do that on the large business side and also on the small business side. And from a housing perspective, Jim, um, you know, I think from what I what I'm seeing, housing is still selling at, at record rates. Uh, our inventory is still pretty low in the state of Arizona. We still see an influx of individuals, particularly from California, which may be driving up our home prices. Do you expect to see a drop in that housing market anytime in the near future? Here's what I'm worried about. Um, so a number of my colleagues uh, think that this is a great indicator of the strength of the economy that housing prices are up. Well, that's only the case if housing prices are up because we're more productive, wages are going up, uh, everything else is kind of pushing uh, home values up. Right now, uh, it's because of a shortage uh, in housing. Prices are really high. We do have investors coming in. And I feel like housing affordability is a major, major issue in the state, one of the biggest uh, uh, concerns of mine going forward. And what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of interest, though, by different groups to try to address this. And in some cases, it could be uh, it could have a cost, like uh, putting more money in the housing trust fund. Our friends at the Department of Housing uh, manage this very well. And in other cases, it could be uh, getting organizations together again, uh, to, not to over uh, um, um, not to bring up the League of Cities too much, but uh, getting the mayors together and talking about are there any regulations that could be impacting the development of affordable housing. I'm working on one project, and I'll say where exactly what one it is, but. Uh, a city is holding out for a particular uh, commercial development to happen that could be located in a hundred different places. I'm sure we could find. You can have both, but sometimes planners and other staff members could be a little bit difficult. But if direction comes from the top, and, and you know how this works uh, as much or better than anybody, if uh, direction comes from the top of how can we, um, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time, uh, you'll you'll get these types of compromises and different communities uh, do this well. Uh, some communities are a little bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, but what, what I liked about uh, your time out in Gilbert is whenever an economic issue came up, we had access to you and your staff, um, the town manager, to economic development, uh, the, the team, and everybody just wanted to figure out and solve a problem. It wasn't I'm busy, I don't have a half a day to try to figure out something major that could have a profound economic impact on the community. So I, I'm hoping that maybe some of the mayors can also educate some of the other mayors on how can we make things more fluid. And policymakers um, just sometimes need to uh, take that humble pill and say, some, I, I don't know everything. Um, can you please give me some ideas? And things work out in the end. And I, I have to say, I work, you know, have worked closely with with our local governments, particularly across the valley, but also across the state. And I don't think anybody is, you know, looking for ways to get in the way of business. I don't think they're, they're that's the goal um, of any of them. But I think sometimes we just get distracted by so many of the urgent things going on, and um, being proactive about what the desires are for your communities or for your business, um, making sure that you have a plan in place, that you have a, a, a um, long and short-term goal, and that you're just taking the steps every day. Uh, we just have this uh, thought process. That I'm sure many of you do, especially after the year that we've all had, but it is just do the next right thing. Uh, figure out what that next right thing is and take the step to do it. Um, it makes it a lot easier to course correct when we're actually moving. You can never correct standing still and in the same same place. Um, Jim, final uh, question for you. <laughs> and that is, uh, you are a small business owner. You can relate to our viewers in so many ways. As a small business owner, so taking off your economist specific hat and looking at it from a, a business owner perspective, what is it that really keeps you up at night? And what is it that you feel like um, you're doing in your business to prepare yourself for 2021? Uh, well, when you're a small business, uh, especially a small business owner, 
you don't necessarily have a, a consistent paycheck. Uh, you have to take care of your staff. There's healthcare issues. There's all sorts of issues that you have to deal with. Um, we, I wanted to be pretty aggressive with providing quality benefits uh, to the team and use the approach of um, having the team not necessarily fear uh, uh, um, getting into trouble for a particular project, but taking pride and feeling responsible to your colleagues on wanting to do a good job. Uh, so uh, we, we had a different approach with how we implemented it and, and it worked out well, but uh, I guess what keeps me up at night is you don't know exactly what you're gonna be working on or what your revenues are gonna be maybe even six months out. And you always have to be looking for ways to be innovative. Uh, you know, if you're consulting, there's, it's different than with uh, you know, a restaurant, but everybody, all these owners uh, do stay up at night. They pro we probably need to have a support group at two in the morning, a separate Twitter for small businesses so we can uh, chat with one another. But um, you, you have to worry about this stuff. And you also, as a, as a small business owner, you want to look out for your employees' families. Uh, there's a lot of people riding on what you do, and in some cases, you can control your own destiny if you work hard. In other cases, you could be thrown a curveball like with COVID, and it's no fault of your own, but all of a sudden there's a challenge. And this is why, even though I've been more conservative on economics and public policy most of my career, I believe that we have to be proactive in many cases at this time and try to help those get back on their feet and then give them the tools where they can move up that ladder again. Wise words from an economist, small business owner for all of us. So thank you, Jim. Really appreciate this dialogue. More than anything, appreciate the work that you and your team did to put this report together. Again, I cannot reiterate enough how important this document will be as we move forward to create and to also contribute to solid public policy. Um, I just want to go over just a few things that we can um, glean from this. I took some notes while Jim was uh, bestowing us with his wisdom. Uh, I just want to just go through a few of those, the takeaways that we can, we can really, um, you know, send home uh, with each of our, our viewers today, although a lot of us are probably at home. So uh, keep at home, let's say. Uh, the first is that smart and steady public policy will make a huge difference for us in the state of Arizona and for each of our small businesses. Um, we need and want to grow from within. And so some of those programs that are government developed need to be accessed by our small businesses, including workforce programs, uh, taking a, a good hard look at the new economy initiative, and a lot of the things that the ACA and other organizations uh, contribute, including ASBA. We have some great contributions to make in this space as well, and, and more on that coming soon in our Forge Ahead program. Um, as we work together uh, and uh, collaborate together, we do have a central voice that becomes stronger. And again, that is what will continue to make a huge difference for all of us. The tools to help our small businesses are imperative to future growth. So if you are a small business owner and you need something, you need a tool, whether it's a finance mechanism, whether it's um, some relaxing and some regulation, whatever those tools might be, uh, ASBA is here for you and we want you to communicate those needs to us so that we can be your voice. Uh, chances are if you need it, somebody else does as well. Relationships matter. This is a key component, I think, especially in Arizona, building relationships with your the banking industry, with your peers, even with your competitors, um, making sure that you're finding ways to communicate and collaborate with uh, other small business owners. I like the idea, Jim, of the Twitter for uh, small business owners only uh, available, particularly at two o'clock in the morning, because as a small business owner myself, uh, I can vouch for that as well. Also, small changes in the economy can make a big difference in the long run. Uh, key, key component there. Uh, we don't need to make large sweeping um, you know, changes in policy or in regulation. Uh, even the small ones can actually make a big difference uh, long term. And finally, one of the last things that Jim shared with us really is that we need to increase the quality of the jobs in the state of Arizona, both through big business, but particularly in our small businesses um, and ensuring that our workforce is prepared 
for those next shifts that are going to be coming in the economy. As a small business owner, I do look at the ideas um, and, and really try to contribute to growing our employees in a meaningful way, both personally and professionally. Um, and so that's been an important component of our small business. And I, I encourage you to, to look at ways you can do that as well. With all of that, that's what I took away from today. I'm sure everybody has a list of their own, but I'd love to introduce Brian Goody. Brian is the CEO of Aurora. He's gonna take us out today as one of our great sponsors. So thank you, Brian, for contributing to ASBA and for also uh, finding the value in this continued collaboration and partnership. Uh, we'll kick it to you. And uh, thanks again to everybody who participated today. Jen, thanks so much. And, and thank you to the Arizona Small Business Association for creating this venue. Um, I sat there, I listened to Jim. First of all, Aurora Payments uh, is a payments company that represents 20,000 small businesses. We're, we're a small business. We employ about 100 folks. And listening to Jim talk about going to get really noticed by his own financial institution when he started a small business and the plight of small businesses on the front side and even getting capital to invest in their business today. Um, as a payments company, we, we sit in the middle of that. We see how businesses are doing with their MasterCard Visa volumes, their gift card volumes, and we know what everybody's going through this year. So the, the knowledge that Jim just imparted, first of all, hit me right in the heart because we have those conversations, whether they're startup businesses or existing businesses today, are going through challenges that they could have never foresaw and so you know coming into 2020 so everything you said jim really i i tell you these conversations happen daily at aurora payments the very things that you talked about so i'm sure the, the people that took the time to tune in today first of all we thank you so much for being a part of the audience today we hope that what jen and jim uh discussed today uh, about small businesses and the overall impact small businesses have on the Arizona economy and job creation. I think, I think Jim, I heard you say that 1.6 million jobs are directly attributed to small businesses. Um, and, and Aurora is a national company. We see that, of course, across the United States. Small business is what drives the economy of the United States of America as well as Arizona. So bringing to light again, what is going on with the plight, I guess now, but I, again, I'm, Today, there was a lady in, in London, 90-year-old lady who just got the first Pfizer vaccine shot, which is pretty neat to see that. I think we all can feel like there is light at the end of this tunnel. And there are good times ahead of us in 2021, and there's opportunity. And you know, the idea today that Jim and, and Jen, you brought to light, what small businesses are going through, again, the size and scope of small business and the policymakers, the legislatures, that are taking notice of what's going on in Small Business America here in Arizona and across this country. To you, we thank you all so much. It's critical that we get the, these restaurants and these retailers back to where they were employing people and, and doing all the things that Jim talked about. ASBA will be, as, as a follow-up to today's sessions, ASBA will be taking some of the content that Jim talked about, sending that out in a link so everybody can, in your downtime, digest that a little bit more. I know. Uh, I didn't go to Wharton Business School, so I'm going to need some time to figure that one out, Jim, some of that stuff. So I appreciate it in the written form that uh, ASBA is going to send out to everybody. So in closing, I want to just wish on behalf of ASBA, Aurora Payments, everybody watching today, a happy, and probably this year of all years, a healthy holiday season. Thank you so much for taking the time today.